Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. And now, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. Hey, good morning. Uh, today's March the 12th, 2022. We're talking about the International Boundary and Water Commission. Live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso. Streaming live on YouTube channel and our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Also streaming live uh, out there on uh, Remember in El Paso When. And remember in El Paso, you know what I'm saying here yes, now? Yes, I Te- do. Texas history begins, begins in El Paso. Paso. This is Melissa Sargent. Good, Good morning. morning, everyone. Glad to be here. It's going to be an interesting show today. And I want to thanks for, uh, like I said, all the people to be here. Just want to remind people that they can also listen to this show via uh, the Internet by going to KTSMRadio.com, where you will click on the iHeartRadio link and join the show anywhere you have Internet. You did cook up a history moment. Yes, it's about a unique border dispute that was finally fixed quite a few years afterwards. Begins with a C. Yes. Uh, Indeed. We'll talk about that. Just a quick announcement. You may have heard it the last couple of weeks. If not, here it is. We are uh, retiring today. Melissa and I are going to be off the show as of today. But the good part is history is the star of the show, and that will continue with uh, Andrew J. Polk being the, uh, the man that he is right now running a board for us in the control room. But also yep. he'll do the, the hosting of the show starting next week. Yeah. An interesting adventure coming there. So, all right, today we're talking with Mark Howe. Good morning. Good morning. Get near that thing there. Okay. <laughs> you know about this radio business. He's not scared uh, of and, a and mic. We can see you no, know. You, know, you like mics. <laughs> and yet you're the cultural specialist. Is that what you do? What you do? Cultural resources specialist. I'm okay. the only one. And just as before we start, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. Um, this is my opinion and not that of the US IBWC or the US State Department. So just to you know get covered on here what I'm talking about. And so, those are federal people and say you're a federal person on a yes. general basis, but today you're a private citizen. Oh no, no, well, I'm you know, cultural resources, talk about history and stuff, got like it. commission stuff. Well, you're also at the International Boundary and Water Commission, it's a federal agency headquartered in El Paso. And you had a long list of things you might want to talk about. So let's get to that in a moment. But give us an overview about what is the International Boundary and Water Commission. Okay. Um, hopefully, Andrew has some of the stuff on um, uh, the overview. Uh, first, also, um, I'm the only cultural resources specialist. So I, I have the whole U.S.-Mexico border. I, I work on the history for the commission. Oh. Only one for the, for the agency yes. or just for the border? For the agency. How long is oh. that? San Diego, as you see on the, well, okay, we're talking on radio, but also what Andrew has on Facebook. Um, I pulled this up from the um, website, the IBWC.gov website, but you can see it goes all the way from San Diego, California to the coast, all the way down here, then upriver to Cabajo Dam, and then all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. You don't, wow. you don't have Elephant Butte? No, no, that's uh, Bureau of Reclamation. Okay. We're just, just south of there where actually canalization started. And that was a big project, a New Deal project in the 1930s that came from Cabajo all the way down here to about American Dam, about the U.S.-Mexico uh, border uh, with uh, New Mexico and Texas. And then you had um, American Canal, American Dam there, and then you're going down south, the Franklin Canal, and then all the way down just past uh, Chamazal. Well, you have Chamazal that starts there and goes down, and then just past there, then you have rectification Another New Deal project, which took the river from going like a spaghetti and made it straight. So in in no, the concrete. Right, well, no, that's there's no concrete on that one. That's just levees uh-huh. on both sides down to Little Box Canyon. Down so there's no County. rivers between Canada and the United States, which would be the, what I would think would be some kind of division, too. Lakes, um, the International Boundary Commission up there is the northern Oh, border. so you, oh, okay. And actually, um, they have monuments similar to ours, but they're smaller. Along the border, because a couple of years ago, I got contacted by a CBP agent saying, hey, we have to do this. I'm like, OK, they've already got this stuff done in GPS. You don't need to repeat everything. Yeah. So you got, Actually, there's two two groups that are part of your, your situation. One's Mexico. Right. We're a binational commission, as you can see here, a binational commission with um, sorry, I'm just going to read off here. We're a binational commission that was established uh, basically after the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in 1848. And then we actually became a permanent commission in 1889, wow. as you can see on the website. That's where you have people working with uh, both sides. And our counterpart, CELA, is just over in Mexico. They're over by the university, just off the bridge of uh, the Americas. And actually, Chamazel had moved the border north. So when you're down in that area, you know, with the soccer fields and everything in Juarez? Mm-hmm. That, the that indentation? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
That was and they the put river. soccer fields in the old riverbed. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, why not? You know. What uh, else are you going to do with them? Right. And if the water was up, then you could go swimming or something. <laughs> but um, so then they moved into the old office down there. I think it was the CB um, Motor Patrol office down there. Well, the point is that you have got a federal agency headquartered in El Paso, correct? Correct. And and it's a very important agency. But I mean, until we started do- talking about it on the radio, it was history. Uh, I don't think a lot of people knew what it was, where it was, or what you did. Right. Uh, and the thing is, um, the history of the agency is very dynamic. And there's a lot of historical players um, that you could think of that. If you, if you go to the Web page, you can see our commissioners. A lot of them are historical figures. In fact, I'll do a little plug. Um, pretty soon, um, I was down on campus and Commissioner Ed Drusina, he was one of our commissioners a couple, um, two commissioners ago. And you, he's a UTEP grad, like me and a lot of other people. And the Civil Engineering College is going to have, I believe, their 50th anniversary coming up. I think it's the 50th. And we were actually talking about that. They're going to have a display, the Centennial Museum down there. Good they idea. Just had one, they just had one on the water, a Smithsonian exhibit. Yeah, that's what's just going o- on right now. It just opened. Right. And there's several pictures and stuff there from IBWC and El Paso Water, Bureau of Rec, various <laughs> other agencies that talk about water. In the borderlands, because if you think about this, um, in fact, at that at that speech, um, the president for UTEP spoke and she brought up the it was a book, I believe. And it said, whiskey is for drinking, water is for, for fighting. fighting. Yeah. And yeah. that's where you got that. Yeah, that's. Well, uh, no, 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 no. Actually, I took that from the actual accounting of that. Oh, that's period, what they said down I, there. Yeah. That's been a history moment that yeah. Melissa has done. Well, the thing about IBWC, I just want to give an overview because a lot of people still don't know who you are, what you do. You're headquartered down there not, not far from the station. Right, just off of Executive in Mesa, mm-hmm. in the corner building up there. Um, it's uh, We moved from the old building from the Commons several years ago up to, to the north part to that new building. So you were down in the riverbed. No, no. Actually, they've been all over the place. Yeah. And... Here's what's interesting. Early 1900s, guess what building they were in? I give up. The Anson Mills building. Oh, that's ah, right. Yeah. How fitting would and that I, be? And I have some stuff to talk about that because people didn't know. Can you imagine um, Anson Mills, who planted uh, El Paso? You know, he, he was retired by that time, but he's talking to some of our consulting engineers in of what was going on. And that one was when I talked about Corbin, was talking to him where he went out, did some stuff, and I'll show that on some of the slides. Corbin's a guy you talked about one time last year. Right. He was. Uh, and then you got a bunch of archives. Some Somebody in the family found a box of stuff and sent it to you. That's just another thing to think about. If you have a, a or find a relative's uh, box of interesting things, don't just dump it. Make sure it goes somewhere somebody can use it. And that's what you got off of that, that crowd. And you got some interesting history that, has now become to light because of that box. Right. And they sent me also a copy that is going to go to New Mexico State because the family is the family's property. Uh, they want that to go to New Mexico. They want that to go to an archives. And yeah. that's actually one of the, the books you have with the monument pictures from yeah. the Barlow Blanco survey from the 1890s when they changed the monuments from the old rock ones and made the obelisk you see now. And I have some pictures um, on as we go through stuff, I'll, I'll talk about stuff. But where Binational Commission was Mexico, worked directly with them on issues with sanitation, border, and other issues. You can see all this on the website. I I didn't put some of the stuff down there, but it talks about what we do, our mission statement. And it's very dynamic. Uh, It works well. And uh, especially when you deal with water issues, you have other countries that come in and talk to us about how do you work this where you're sharing the water resources along the river. Well, that brings to mind the recent dumping of sludge in the, in the river. And how does that, and it's supposedly it all got taken out. How could that happen? Well, I, from, I, from my, what I understand is the sewer line was, was broken by accident. Right. And, but I mean, it dumped into the river. What happened then? And they cleaned it up the last few weeks. They are doing that right now. Yeah. So you can go to the El Paso Water Utilities page and you can see they have pictures posting up there. And I was recently down there to talk to some of the people who are working on that simply on uh, the his- the history of that area so they know about Smelter Town. Yeah. Because that whole area was full of people. And some of the pictures I'll show in a little bit actually shows kids playing out there in the river oh, land. Oh, yeah. And now you go out It was out a playground. There. They went swimming a lot. Oh, yeah. 
You Just like out. they've done the kids in Mexico for years have done in the Rio Grande. Right. And and they still do. So in oh, the yeah, summertime, you go over there by the Casa de Adobe Museum, yeah. which is by Monument One. You see people out there uh, fishing in the water and everything else. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. But there's fish. Uh -huh. There's fish. There's a lot of fish out there. <laughs> I'm not interested in that kind of fish, I don't think. Oh, but, not know, those fish. I think I, one thing that's always disturbed me more than anything else was the fact that having a river like this, that we never did more promotion about it, that there weren't more parks by it. They just, I, and IBC, I know, had their reasons, but at least on the northern or maybe the southern sides, there wasn't something that people could go be there, park, enjoy it. Like you do like any other. Like well, you, you, you may or may not remember there was a, uh, a take your Chevy to the levee place for a long time oh, yeah. in the upper <laughs> valley. And a lot of people went and did yeah, that. Yeah, I heard and about it. I never, yeah, I, know, I, did I knew that. where it was. And then they, they closed it off and said, you can't, you can't be here anymore. Was that your guys doing that? I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah. Wasn't it was it was I didn't know. Back in the 70s. <laughs> that used know, to be a whole lot of fun to go out there. Yeah, and you have places like the Guadalupe River, You the even the Salt River, which runs the same way in Arizona. It's only open in the summertime. They tube. They have events down there. And uh. it, but we just never have done that. And it might be because of the fact that we're bordering with, Mex with Mexico. Well, you have to also remember Elephant Butte. And so the river is dry most of the year. Oh, no, no. But I meant in the summertime, you could still be pretty. Oh, they still do. There are people who tube from down the river when there's water. I right. know, I know and, someone and who did it. And during the irrigation season, which I believe starts in June this year. So that's why they're, is they're it hurrying. June? In June. Wow. They're hurrying to get everything cleaned yeah. up. Now, you have to remember, irrigation season is, is maintained by the BOR and Elephant Butte Irrigation District. What they're doing is it depends on the snowpack in the Colorado Rockies. Of course. So that will yeah. dictate how much water the reservoir has and how much they will release. And it's the east side of the Rockies that were affected by the snow. Am I correct? Right. They're still getting a lot of snow up there. Um, I don't know what the snowpack is, but if you go to some of the pages, it'll tell you. I believe yeah. there's um, a lot of... Go ahead. But Andrew, Andrew has two cents you want to bring in, right? Well, yeah. Actually, I've been up there when the people have been doing the tubing kind of in the Las Cruces area, and I have canoed down the Rio Grande within the New Mexico section as well, just kind of just ending up north of like the pecan farms. Did you hit a lot of sandbars? Uh, I called it Rio walking more than anything <laughs> else. <laughs> but true. Yeah. But it, it can be done. Anyway, okay. It's possible. Now, Mark, we, this is Mark Howe here. We may be getting off of where you thought we were going to go today. Oh, that's, but that's that's life. In the, but uh, you, you have people. Live that radio. Like, I mean, there's always permits for stuff going in the river. Like, remember, they used to yeah. have some church services down the Chamazal. Yeah. And then I think one of the other radio stations would have a, an event tubing down the Rio yeah, Grande. Yeah, uh, the KLAQ. Right. And so they would have that. And we'd always, you know, make sure, hey, don't, do, you know, don't go down the wrong areas of the levee because this is for flood control because you can compromise the levees because yeah. that's exactly Is that what the one in the homemade boats? Yes. Oh, oh my uh, goodness. The, the Armada. Uh-huh. I think it was always so fun, so much fun. And, it, you know, it's just, it's great. I like Seymour. I, I do want to point out, though, we had one listener. Remark on the fish. He said, "Time for catch and release of those fish." Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yes, like, and, and let somebody else take it off your hook. Yeah. Well, I see these people. They they fish in these canals, which I'm like, okay, I don't think I would want to eat the fish out of there. But they do it, I think, just to to, to fish. <laughs> there's some big carp. Oh, there is. There's some huge, huge carp, <laughs> and there's some bass. Right. There's all kinds of fish. You'll see them out there just walking. When we open back up after COVID and stuff, you know, a lot of times I've always given tours across American Dam mm -hmm. and stuff. Um. Friends of the Mountain, I believe it is, Jim Tolbert's group. Oh, Celebration. Celebration. I mean, he's hoping to do some stuff in the future <laughs> that, you know, we show people about the history of the borderlands and stuff. But what one thing is, um, on some of the pictures I'll show on here, is people don't realize is sometimes you're down there, even though you're in the city, it's very quiet at times. Oh, yeah. You see ducks and the stilts and all kinds of little birds and stuff. Black out neck there. stilts. You had pictures of those. Oh, yes. oh Mark Al. We need to take We need. Uh, you got, got you, there's Mark there down on the board. Where are you there? Okay, that's uh, by the El Paso. Just uh, <laughs> that's in Chamazal, and that is just to the west of the El Paso Bridge. You can Before see we take a break, Andrew, you got the black neck stilts up there. The pictures of the, the birds. birds. Black neck stilts. It's They're, in the PowerPoint later on. I use it as a, as a the PowerPoint to break on sections. Yeah. Oh, never mind. There they, oh, there they are. Yeah, he's got them. That's and a really see, cool picture. You notice that it's still water, <laughs> and then you can see a double image. And, and also those, I knew those from Keystone, Melissa. Yeah. Remember that? Those are the ones that lay their eggs on the rocks. They oh don't my. build a nest. And it was like, we have certain times of year, don't walk and watch where you're walking because their eggs look like rocks. I think we're learning things we didn't plan to today, but that's okay. Oh, that's, but that's the point is talking about little known things. And we'll get back to some notice. more of that. Mark House here. We're going to take a break here and come back. Uh, you got anything you need to put in there, Andrew or Melissa, about anything? 
Uh, I just have a gentleman. He says that William Henry Mee says that west side of Rockies also, since we have about 120,000 acre feet annually that are taken from the Navajo, Little Navajo, Blanco Rivers that feed into the San Juan River by Farmington and take it through Arizona. Doesn't even get here. Oh, then to the Rio Grande. There it is. Tunnel to the Camarillos River and then into the Rio Grande. That's all. So long trail. All right. Should we take a break <laughs> here at this point? We'll be back in a moment on the El Paso History Radio Show. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call. Jackson here. That's my cue. I better talk. To you. you know, we got this whole thing going here on... Uh the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. And our weekly promos are on that uh, 
Facebook page. And we also have an archive of the program on youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. And you can actually watch it live over there if you feel like it. Um, El Paso Gold DVDs I've been producing for the last 20 years are on there on that same YouTube page, as well as 20 segments of ABC TV series from El Paso History TV. They're now online at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. And a lot of things going on there. Take a look at that. Also, before you get into your next thing, we had an added announcement uh, about the Harvey Girls. Ah. And uh, do, you have, do you have that or do you, I uh, should do it? Yes, I do have it on my phone. Because it's join us Monday. To get to it. Monday on March 14th. Yes. Union, pa- there it uh, is. Uh, I found it. Okay. Union Passenger Station Depot and Harvey Girls Meeting Room at 2 p.m. Right. And you can join if you'd like to join the Harvey Girls so you can do that. I mean, it's a great place to learn about the train history in El Paso, especially the Harvey Girls. And to actually be in the, the historic depot that has been here for over, what, 100 and... Some odd. Some odd years, yes. And uh, it's just, it's a really cool station to be in there because you kind of feel like back in the old 40s movies, you know, you'd see all the people in the trains. It's just really, really neat Two place o'clock to on go. Monday, right? Yeah. And call up, call up Patricia? At, uh, where's her phone number? I don't have it right here. I'll have to give it out later. Just open know. the door and yell, Patricia! Yeah, she'll, co- she'll see she'll what happens. Up. No, but anyway, that's on Monday down at the Union Depot station. And that's an interesting thing to do. Harvey girls, go ask them, what do you mean by Harvey? And they'll let you know. It's not the rabbit. It's not, <laughs> yeah, that not the rabbit. Well, yeah, some people remember some. that. Okay. It's not the big rabbit. Anyway, going on here to the next event here, what do you got? Oh, well, I wanted to tell everybody about our favorite radio show sponsor, and that's Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant. And they're located in Canyon at 6761 Donovan Drive. And you can call Pepe or Lorena at 915 915- 877-2152 for a to-go order or cater for your next special event. And don't forget, Pepe's is home of the one oh, and only oh, margarita. margarita. That's going to be hard to find anywhere else in the state. Well, you know, somebody better call them and tell them we're coming out there for our uh, end, end of retirement or retirement beginning, shall well, we I hope say. everybody joins us. Yeah, and then, well, we're going to have a victory uh, celebration out there. I don't think we told Pepe. <laughs> somebody <laughs> call him up. Bernie will probably call. Call everybody him up and say, hey, look, guess yeah. surprise. You put yeah. us some extra tables. Because I already know some other people who are yeah. coming I up. I know there. there's a lot of people that are coming that not not the usual crowd yeah. that shows up. But yeah. it's fun because you get to meet people and you get to talk about history and, and just, you know, share your story. And I, I got to tell you, even after we get off here, I'm going to still go out there on a regular basis. And you could do what <laughs> you can. It's kind of hard when, for us. I can, we could order it long distance. Well, you can go when you can. Yeah. Fair enough. Mark Howe, we're here. We got about uh, only a couple of minutes in this segment before another break. You got a story you want to really get to? I mean, we, we took you off your, your path here. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. And then, you know what, Andrew, I forgot? I had the one about Anson Mills in there. That's on my the stuff to, to throw in there towards the end. But uh, he was one of the commissioners. But uh, I don't know. Hopefully, you can get the one on here for the uh, survey down the river in 1901. And uh, hopefully, he'll get that up there. Uh, can you go to the front page, the first one? And so what it is is... Uh, all this information is, is public information, and they went from San Marcio, New Mexico, down to Laredo, Texas. And uh, it's from uh, the Proceedings of the International. They had water in the title in parentheses, international, but it was International Boundary Commission until 1944 when it became International Boundary and Water Commission. Officially changed it. Officially changed to that. But on this one, it also talks about this folio. It's from 1903. And it was uh, part of this river survey in 1901 because they wanted to see what was going to go on for the equitable distribution of the waters of the Rio Grande. So that comes into the 1906 treaty. Because you, you owe some to Mexico is the other point. Right. So there's a certain amount of water that goes to Mexico every year, acre feet. And it actually has that listed on here. But on here was in the United States section was Anson Mills. He was a brigadier general at that time. W.W. Follett. He was one of the consulting engineers who Corbin followed after him. Huh. At that time, they were being political appointees for the engineers, and now they're principal engineers. But as you can see on here, we're going down, and it just talks about on this as a 1900 of going down, and they actually have a diary of what was going on in the river, uh, going down and what they were seeing. They were keeping track of everything, and they were doing gauges uh, past the small Mexican village. Um, and then they have another one on this one with four pictures that show some of the stuff that they took on the river. And it talks about what was going on, the photographs. And I'm going down to um, the fourth slide. And if you're on Facebook, you can read this, but they're talking about the El Paso to Presidio area where they were going down through the river. And some of these pictures are really interesting and neat that you can see. You can actually find this online, the National Archives, this, this folio. It's already been digitized on there. But they actually had a, a casualty where one of the um, people drowned in the river. They drowned in the river at that time. And it was a um, sad event. 
Um, but I'll just read you something from this. Uh, July 17, J.D. Dilliard, Assistant Engineer of the United States Section of the International Boundary Commission, received a telegram from General Anson Mills, the United States Commissioner, authorizing him to take charge of the rec uh, reconnaissance and carry on the work at the earliest possible date possible. Mr. D. Griggs, the representative of the Department of Justice, was recalled by Attorney General Knox a few days after the drowning of the consulting engineer. The hydrographic notes kept by the consulting engineer and all pho photographs taken after leaving Langtree on July 17, supplies and camp equipment were lost at the time of Mr. Cunningham's drowning. You had a lot going on there. Hey, well, Mark, it's almost time for another break here. You have, uh, where do you want to pick up when we come back? Um, well, let's, uh, Andrew, we'll go to like uh, the, the picture of the monument on San Elizario, uh, San Elizario Island. Oh, now we have yeah. to talk about why you had an island, right? Uh, yeah, we could talk about that one real quick. That's still in the ones we're talking about on the uh, 1901 survey. After the break, let's get okay. to that. And we've got to take a break here on the El Paso Vista Radio Show. We can take a phone call or two about our topic if you wish. What's that number, Melissa? It is 915-544-5876 or 915-544-KTSM. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, 
and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso. All right, listen, I've got a caller on the phone here. We'll get to him in a second. And he's from Brooklyn, apparently, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, check out the celebration of our mountains.org Saturday next week on the, mo- on the 19th. Hike a portion of the El Camino Real, and you can get on that. It's a Camino Real de Tierra Adentro National Historic Trail with the BLM people, uh, Cody Dapra, and you'll enjoy a panoramic interpretive hike, but also learn about the history and importance of the trail dating back to 1598 with Don Juan. And he's not the Juan and only margarita. <laughs> no. But that's just another guy. <laughs> anyway, so uh, get a hold of Jim Talbert if you like, 915-525-7364. Well, Monterey Asset Management is now M, the numeral one, epmanagement.corp, and they are a superior property management services company. Visit their website at m1ep.com for more details or call the office at 915-592-4549 to learn more about their services. And if you're looking to sell, buy, or rent a home, then you need to call this number. It's 915-588-1850 and talk with Patrick Tuttle of Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate. Patrick's a top-selling realtor and is the person to go to buy to buy or sell or rent a home. So give him a call today at 915-588-1850. We got Mark Howe here from the International Boundary and Water Commission, and your title has to do with culture. Cultural resources. Yeah, cultural oh, resources. And that's an, that's an interesting thing to do because that gets a wide range of things you can do. History, archaeology, environmental. Monuments. Monuments. Who, who lived here and did what? Right. And we got a question on the phone here, a guy from Brooklyn named Jorge. Jorge, how's it going today? It's going good. good morning, Mark, before Jorge. I ask my question, I would like to thank Melissa in Jackson for the oh, hospitality they had shown the callers the college history show. Oh yes. But um yeah, the question I had was um over on Kansas in front of the Apostle Natural Gas Building above Cantonio below Texas, there's a marker there. Are you familiar with it? It's like an police. Yes, and in fact, something relevant. I wondered if you knew what it pertained to. Right, and Je- um, Andrew's showing the picture of it, and it's actually a, a marker that was put in by Anson Mills. Anson Mills was one of our commissioners from 1894 to 1914, um, uh, and there's some pictures of uh, of him on there. And the one thing about him was Anson Mills was actually at the battle was a captain under Crook at the Battle of the Rosebud, just before oh. Custer was wiped out. Oh my. And um, what I have on here is his biography also talks about different things. But um, what he did also was, uh, I'm just going through my slides here to make. You said earlier he platted El Paso. Right. And so this this monument that Jorge's asking about was for that. Nope. Um, That monument, as you see on here, the picture, 
Um, that's one of the monuments that was made by the El Paso Foundry. And if you look at uh, the next page, it actually talks about uh, General Anson Mills when he was in Washington. And this is after he retired. About The monument was put in place, as you can see on here. And it was about his brother and the people who were killed by Apache. Oh, okay. And Jorge, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Uh, could you uh, elaborate how it was that his brother came to be killed by Apaches? Okay. Thanks for calling. I'm going to put you off right. a little listen okay, offline. Thank Thanks a lot. Okay. On that one, um, I actually have a, a detailed stuff, but there's a lot of books out there that actually talk about some of this stuff. And what it was is he wrote down, uh, reading off here, they were going up there on stagecoach and they were heading west. And I believe they're going to join the California column, I believe. And they were killed by uh, Cook's Peak. And just south uh, east of there, uh, he actually asked one of our engineers, Corbin, in the 1910s uh, to go find this location. And then I have detailed stuff on this from the letters that were sent to me, and I hope to publish that sometime in the future. Cool. And it talks about where they were killed, and they were trying to find this because he wanted to have a marker. So he had actually paid for this marker. And if you go to the next page from a uh, Bernie sergeant gave me this, was General Anson Mills gives monument to El Paso City uh, from the El Paso Herald on 20 September 1920. And so it has all the information on there, what happened to them, and the information of the battle that occurred. And so that's what he did. And then also another page that we have on there talks about the foundry that he paid for this El Paso Foundry Machine Company. He paid for this monument. Because these are part, part of the Barlow Blanco monuments, the ones you see going west, the land boundary monuments, all the way to San Diego. And if you come down over by American Dam, you can look on the hill. And a lot of people don't realize that's monument number two, which is yeah. one of these monuments. So number one is down, in down the, below. right by the river. Correct. And technically, it should be in the middle of the river, but you can't do that. Right, because it's washed away. Yeah. Which happened to one of the monuments on the Colorado River, number 209, washed away. The point being is that the boundary marker is actually the center point of the deepest channel. Right. Okay. That, and was, that was made back in the 1840s. That's by treaty. And you really treaty. can't put it there. So that's the point. It'll wash away. Yeah. yeah. Back then, you didn't have the dam. And when we go back to those pictures, you see why. Because the river was very uh, wild at that time. It came and went when it felt like it with the snow coming out of Colorado. Right. It was like the Colorado River Yeah. yeah. At, at times. And Andrew just had that picture on there. But that's, uh, that's the thing about Anson Mills. And I... And another thing is, Andrew, could you go back to uh, the Mills building? Um, what's interesting was you used to have our office down there in the Anson Mills building. And people don't realize that when you go down there to go eat at Anson 11, you're in the Anson Mills building named after him. That's still standing today. And, uh, you know, his work. And then, of course, the last one, he passed away in 1924. And actually, when I was in Washington one year, I uh, went to Arlington and his as you're heading towards the house, uh, Lee's house, he's just on the south of there. His marker, his grave, as you see here, looking towards the south, and just uh, oh, about 40 feet away is George Crook's uh, burial, where he's at. Really? Is it marked? The... Oh, yes. Okay. They're very, oh, well, they're heavily visited. There's okay. so much history you're intertwining here. It's amazing how things come and go and, uh, and are connected. Right, and there's just so much history. So hopefully I there's answered a picture his question on that. Yep. Yeah, okay. And so you can see he's buried there. And, and that then, building, by the way, is, is down on the plaza in downtown El Paso. Right. Yeah. And um, people don't realize, but we had offices there back in the early 1900s, and they were talking in the Corbin diaries about that, and they were moving. We also had one in office on San Francisco, and then we also had offices at different areas until we moved up here, I think, in the they moved in the maybe 70s or 80s. Oh, combined the up there on the river? Right, and then we moved up here. Right. But this is our headquarters. The headquarters is here in El Paso. Yeah, you're because you're right at... at Executive Center and Mesa. Mesa, which is the old FBI building. I think it was ICE. Oh, yeah, it was ICE. Homeland Security. That was um, one of them. I think it was. Well, they've right. all changed their name to one. The thing. FBI, I think, aren't they out on uh, uh, Mesa Hills? Mesa Hills. Yeah. yeah. It was just, it was one of those. It was the, yes. those guys with the guns. Yes. And federal guys. Now, you, <laughs> you, you don't carry Mesa guns. Hills. Oh, you don't carry guns. No, right? no, no, I don't carry anything. I but you call them if you need them. He lost right. all, yeah, he lost all his in the river. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, a boating accident. I, yeah, boating accident. I heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> Funny how that happened. <laughs> I carry a camera to take pictures. That's why you see some of these cool pictures I yeah. have. Like, like, oh, that's cool. Anyway, so are we going to get the Socorro mission? Um, yeah, actually, Andrew, we can, uh, we're going to change a little bit. We'll go to the Socorro mission stuff. Now, that's unusual. 
that you, you know, you want to take a break here first and come back and do that. Sure. Let's do that. Taking a break here. And you got uh, either of you social media ender in the control room, uh, Melissa sitting here. Let him, he's, uh, I've been putzing around here. All right. Yeah. There actually was a question that came in. Uh, Flaco Jimenez wanted to ask me, we'll get into this in future segments here. Uh, can you ask Mark about our former mayor's time with the IBWC? That's true. And any significant actions that may have happened during his tenure. So we'll get to that. maybe that to get one here now. Remember that after the break. Here. Right. But I'm, don't know all the, everything on that. So yeah, you, Carlos. Uh, Marin, no, Ramirez. 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 Yeah, interesting, interesting history there. All right, we'll take a break and come back in a moment on the El Paso History Radio Show. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where. To- you are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM six ninety in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook dot com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our own. You want to talk about music history in El Paso? Go to Talkin' Rock Radio with Rick Kern. It's Talkin' Rock Radio. Dot com. Oh, that was quick. It's so okay. short. <laughs> Mission Del Rey is a place for town for out of town visitors to get their souvenirs, southwestern jewelry, or, jewelry or collectibles, and get great decor to give your home that southwestern flair. So don't miss their clearance section, which includes scratch and dent items as well as closeout items. And you can shop online shop online at missiondelrey.com or visit their store at fourteen twenty one North Lee Trevino Suite A. 
Mission to Raise phone number is 915-440-2140. And don't forget to mention the El Paso History Radio Show and receive a discount at your checkout time. They're a really hard-working group of people out there, entrepreneurs. Yeah, they they, you know, I'll see their pants. They put that thing together out of nothing. Yeah, and fabulous they, people. And they've got more than just the the usual souvenirs that you see. They got some really quality pieces. Over yeah, they got some great stuff. Great the jewelry, especially. All right, talking with uh, Mark Howe here. He's a cultural guy. Cultural resources. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but, <laughs> He's got culture. He got culture. Archaeology. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's amazing. You do cover quite a bit here. And one you uh, thing you mentioned to, to me was the Socorro Mission. Right. Uh, but first. Um, uh, we had a question about Commissioner Ramirez. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't know a lot of the history. I apologize for that. But if you go to the webpage, you can find information, the biography of him when he was commissioner here. and uh, Former mayor of El Paso. Right, former mayor of El Paso. And the last time I was um, asked to go down for the commission um, for the 12 Travelers exhibit to represent IBWC at the Chamazal several years ago. And I met his wife and stuff and talked to can her I, about stuff. Yeah. Right. So that's what we have. But we want to go to um, the Socorro Mission. Now, why is that part of your world? What? Let me ask you. Do you know about the river monuments? Which ones that are? People forget. You oh, know yeah. the land monuments, the ones that you see a monument on the border to California. To yeah. The land, but there's actually river monuments. So if you see here, um, several years ago, Socorro Mission gave a call and said, hey, we found this marker. I said, oh, yeah, that's one of our rest, uh, reference point monuments. And he said, what? What's this? So if you look at this picture here uh, for the Socorro Mission, oh, here it is. Yeah. Um, and what it shows is what it looks like. Okay, you see on the right side, it's about ground level. It's in the southwest corner. And these were reference points. They were all marked, and they, you can see RP number 8 on this one. And the picture of the mission actually shows it at that time frame above ground. So they were about, uh, the next picture, you can see what one of them looks like down the river by Presidio. And what the, what that is showing is just um, how how tall they were, and it was a a bronze plaque on top, and it says IBC and uh, C E L for Sela. But uh, Andrew, let's uh, go back a couple slides uh, for the second one we have, and that actually shows on their brochure for the Socorro mission. It actually talks the international talks about this uh, what was going on at the mission and they, uh, what this is, but they put this over there because remember the first Socorro mission was to the southeast of there and that got washed away by the right. floods. And people don't realize the river really migrated. The river went wherever it felt like. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't always where it used to be. And if no. you go where it is today, it's quite a distance. I mean, not yeah, far, it, but it's it, quite can't a ways from there. the river. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, up in Nebraska, the, the Bertrand is like a mile away from the river and there's this river boat that sank Mm -hmm. And it was buried 40 feet below the surface. And then some of that happened on the Mississippi as well. We've got three minutes left in this segment, by okay. the way. So, And just so people know, we're talking about pictures that you, you put up right. that are now on their Facebook page. And they can go look at these later. Right. and so Because it's archived on that page, El Paso yeah. History Radio Show. So you can look at the one we have, the river monuments, and they put these across both sides of the river. So when the river did move, they could use trigonometry to figure out where the river was at, where actually the yeah. border still was. And Andrew so and so is showing some of the pictures of what this looks like down by Presidio area. And then you can also, there's a picture of the of this, and this is the one in Spanish, because both, when they do stuff, they do it in English and Spanish, or it depends right. on the commission. And this is uh, from that book, and you can see this one from 1912, the picture um, of the people standing around after they put the monument in. And the river is probably quite a ways away from there, and this is what they did. It talks about them putting it in and how many there are. And you can find these all the way down, even by Brownsville and stuff. We found them. They've been buried and stuff over time. But we were looking for the ones from several of them down along the river. But as development has occurred over time, things disappeared. and uh, they Just, just washed disappeared. away or whatever. Yeah, right. Buried. So, Andrew, let's go to the next picture. And this one shows Squirrel Mission from the 1890s. And there's a wall there around it. So you don't see the you don't see what's in the background there. But look at the surface of the land. So the Socorro Mission, you're looking towards the northeast. And then you go to the next picture, and what you're going to see, well, that's, there we go. Uh, next one. That's the next one. Okay, that one right there. And what you see is that arrow is pointing down to the monument. And you look at that monument, and you notice that it's slowly over time is starting to get covered. And then that's, that's from it. the 1920s. And then you go to the next one from the 1960s, and you notice that it's even more covered. And then, of course, 
Um, what you have is the one you see nowadays. And the last one we have on there, that's just a two-page paper put together for uh, people for information along the borderlands, mostly for yeah. like the uh, Border Patrol people. Exactly. So they know, hey, when you're out here, you see the monuments along the land border, but also you have monuments down the river that people don't know about. So your International Boundary Water Commission, you have monuments all the way down the river as well as on the border to, to uh, uh, California. But the ones down the river are no longer where the river used to, uh, rivers moved. Right. And are you still in charge of those monuments? It's kind of interesting. They're still, you could say they're still government property, but yet you don't really know. They're just kind of gone. We're about are, half, a, half a minute out. Go ahead. Are any of them on the Mexican side? Or yes. So, they're on both sides. Well, I mean, the set, because of the river changing? Well, right. But if you go down by Presidio, the ones that are on the U.S. side, they're above the first terrace. Yeah. They were put up there, so they would stay out of the floodplain. And then over by Presidio in the church over in Hohanaga, mm -hmm. there was one over there. So they could just use the trigonometry, but and now point, yeah. one of our previous THC, Texas Historical Commission, uh, archaeologists went over there because his wife's from Ohanaga, and he was trying to find it, but it's gone. So they Mark, disappeared over time. The music is there. We're going to get out of here for this hour. You're sticking around for the next hour. Yes, I oh, am. Oh, you have to because there's more details to come. Lots of interesting things people didn't know about. International Boundary Water history. Commission, and it's Mark Howe. And you'll be at Pepe's today, I'm guessing. Oh, of course. Of co and As a big, big party out there, we think. We're not going to shoot out how many people, but... If you can make it, uh, I, I hope they have room out there. Most of it will be fun, huh? I think it'll be a lot of we're fun. We're declaring victory, and we're retiring. See you after the <laughs> news. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KDSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. 
Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020 with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. 
Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588. Man, I tell all kinds of people talking to us on Facebook. That's interesting. However, we need to talk about the history moment. It's the top of the second hour. Melissa Sargent has prepared one prepared one for the El Paso History Alliance. You have an El Paso History Moment today, and it's about the Chamizal settlement with Mexico. The Chamizal Dispute. In 1852, 600 acres of El Paso land on the Rio Grande was at the heart of a boundary dispute between Mexico and the United States. The dispute was based on the interpretation of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo and the Treaty of 1884 that specified the boundary should be down the middle of the river regardless of any alterations in the banks or channels. Finally, in 1963, the United States and Mexico ratified a treaty that followed a 1911 arbitration recommendation. The agreement awarded to Mexico 366 acres of the Chamizal area and 71 acres east of the adjacent Cordova Island. More history next week on El Paso History Moments. I'm Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance. And that's what you do. Well, you know that that dispute was actually also called the Tortilla Curtain. Tortilla. The Tortilla Curtain. And the, it, for many, many years. It basically, I think it came about because of the uh, Cold War when we had the Iron Curtain. Iron Curtain. You got to have some other curtain yeah. on this side, huh? It got quite contentious. So. Oh, yeah. Well, I wanted to let you know, if you enjoy history, then you need to go to these Facebook pages that talk about El Paso and the region's history. And the first one is the El Paso History Alliance, a group of historians who promote the architectural history and culture of El Paso and is managed by Max Grossman and Mark Stone. And I really have enjoyed doing the history moments for them. And the Remember in El Paso Win with thousands of picture stories and much more managed by Barbara Given Bainey and her team of volunteer editors for the page. Much of stuff they do is very good. Chief admin is Barbara Given Bainey and the admins include Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret Smith and Paul Louie. Moderators are Ben Vincent and Ken Weiss, and they do a great job of El Paso history. The archives are amazing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many pictures they have. I tried one day to look at them all. It took me three days. And You'll I, be on I, there for days. And I don't think I got through them all. Anyway. And get addicted. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, look at this. Look at this. You know, look at this. It's an amazing <laughs> thing here. Andrew, what do you got? Well, we got a lot of people commenting, of course, over on the social media here. A lot of people checking in, Barbara Given Banny, amongst others, in there. Did I have a question coming out of the last segment, though, from. Uh, Daniel Rivera, didn't the river destroy the Seneca mission? We were talking about some of the markers around the missions there. Well, Seneca, wouldn't that be somewhere over actually still in, in, in Mexico? Mexico? Yeah. I think it was destroyed. I think by that. I mean, a lot of them were destroyed. Yeah. That was I mean, well, they were all there, built there by the, the river. Yeah. There was another one, thing. San Lorenzo, that became part of a Catholic church and no longer a mission, I mm -hmm. think. And then it, I think there was one more upriver in Salineta, yes, and that wasn't really a mission, was it? Uh, it kind of was a location for a while. It, it, would, but it would have been considered a mission. It would have been a full church, perhaps, yeah. but it would have been a mission they would have had. There was a there. bunch. Of, and, of course, the main one is the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, and they politely and smartly built it on a little rise in, in, in a bump in the land. So whenever it flooded, that didn't get taken out. Uh, Socorro got taken out. Asleta got taken out. Uh, let's see what else. And uh, I don't think San Lazario was built when the big flood hit there. But a lot of things in down the river. The river did what it wanted, obviously. Talk about the Isla for a moment. Are we ready, ready to do that, or do you want to go somewhere else? Mark Howe. Talk about which? There's a, you had a monument marker in the Isla. Oh, La I, Isla. La Isla. The island of Vislata. Oh, and yeah. it was, that's no, that was Cordova, wasn't the it? The river had two channels, so it created an island. Not a big deal, but... Right, that's what the Chamazo kind of fixed. Oh, no, this is down by, by down, down river past uh, Socorro, I think, wasn't it? Oh, I think it's a picture okay. we got up on there yes. right now, right? Yeah. Okay, that's from the survey. Okay. That's when they were going to build, they were doing a survey back in 1901, and mm -hmm. they were looking at finding an area of what the river was doing because they were going to build a dam, which we'll cover later on. Oh, make it quicker than later. Okay. Well, uh, go ahead and do this one. Uh, up, up river. But you can see on this picture, there's a monument that they took on there for San Elizario Island. And so they actually had monuments along that area too. Remember, this picture was before they put the ones in, the small ones we saw at Socorro Mission, for the, ref for the reference points. 
They put the, they had other monuments down along the river. So people might find them in their backyard, in their front yard, in a street. You never know anymore. Right down Alameda by the missions, we were looking for ones down around there. But you know, you know, find if you find one, call Mark. We would like to know about it. Right, our surveyors are, would love to see that. So we can well, what see was, where they what were. were the mar- what were they made of? Were they made it's of concrete? Like the one concrete? you see the picture that he has. The concrete. I was just wondering if like it was a nice it. stone or something. A metal that plate they made. on it. Yep, metal Stuck plate on it. And people have probably have no idea because all the development along the river. Uh, yeah. along the roads and the areas down there going. What's this? I don't care. Bulldozers. And uh, yeah, it's gone. Right. And so you had, uh, from the pictures we were shown was when they were going down the river, they had actually one of the monuments that the Barlow Blanco ones they had. We can hear you oh, better. Sorry. Use this microphone gizmo and we will get out there better. Right. So you had a lot of stuff on there, but also on some of the stuff that I was talking about earlier in the 1901 from the folio, you could find online that it had the, the title of it actually talks about all that and talked about Senecu. And I didn't bring that in. But they had a lot of areas that were destroyed. Of course, you know, the river would do as it wanted until Elephant Butte came in, which actually kind of slowed down the amount of damage from the river. It's kind of the same thing with Boulder Dam. Yeah. You know, when that was put in, you didn't, you, you tamed the river so they weren't so wild and, and, and wild. And we'll, some of the pictures will show on that. But I think we wanted to talk about was the park. Go ahead. Okay. So Andrew will bring that. Uh, well, here, uh, he's got the one picture he's going to show on preview. But, Melissa, when you're doing your history moment, here's a picture from, I believe, 1929 or 19... Oh, of the Chamizo where people were living well, there? And... Nope. It's just a picture of El Paso, the downtown area that he has up there. And when you were talking about, this is pre uh yeah. what it was looking like oh, down yeah. in that area. See how the river and you've got a little yep. island in there? Yeah. Yep. So you have a lot of stuff like that that was uh, occurring down along this area. Just to make the point, the river started moving when it felt like it, and it kept going south. And claiming more land since the treaty was the center point of the deepest channel, all of a sudden the land changed countries. Right. So today you're in you're in the U.S. Tomorrow you're in Mexico because yeah. the river moved. And sometimes the citizens were were, were bypassed, and they didn't. Not, they did, not all of them wanted to become Americans. No, it's kind of some like did. It was split. Yeah. Yeah. The ones so what that do didn't you want to become Mexico? They didn't want to become U.S. So yeah. Like, and so you're sitting in the middle, and you're a nobody. Right. And if you look at um, the web page, you're going to see stuff on the Banco treaties. And what that was, was when the river moved and certain areas were cut off to when they did canalization, rectification, and other stuff, they, you, you wanted to put a straight line in for the river to keep it channelized. But yet it went like this. Yeah. And you get down by Socorro, we were down there one year, a couple of years ago, doing some work. And you look at the photos from the 20s and go, oh, this used to be Mexico. Now that's the U.S., but there were houses here where people yeah. were growing crops. Yeah. And so it's completely changed. And you're you're looking at this, trying to figure this out based on the archaeology, so you can go do work out there. But uh, when they when they did that, um, under I believe Mexico's treaty, you can't lose land anymore. Yeah. And so they would like acre for acre on how they were doing this. When they so they got those. So it's like the treaty that was signed in 1963. You know how that you got the Chamizo Park, and then if you look across the river, that huge park there was those areas were designated to never have. Uh, manufacturing homes or anything they had to stay open parks but they got back acre for acre or something yeah something like that okay. right and so the sila office used to be in the u.s and after they <laughs> moved it then they moved into the, <laughs> our, one of our old offices for i think it was cbp all right tell me when you're ready to, to okay, go so up, let's go up the river. Uh, andrew let's go to the ones about the the park in uh, the international monument number one park ah yes and he'll get that in a minute but it's um that's across a, the river from Old Osarco. Right. At Old Smelter Town. Yep. It's it's actually, he's got a picture that he's showing on um, the area, what it looks like. But if he can go to the first one that shows the park back in the 1970s. Yeah, this one's showing this. Okay. Well, he's shown, well, that one he has, sure. he's shown live is actually after the uh, Mexican Revolution, they tore down all those, the buildings and stuff. And in the 1930s, you notice there were two monuments there. Monument number one, and the Mexico had a monument where the Mexican Revolution was at at that time frame. Well, that's oh. what that was for. I that's, saw that. Yes, and that's And gone. I wonder why there's It's gone, and now that's where the Casa de Adobe Museum is at. And okay. of course, oh, it's, right. it's elevated yeah, above okay. the ground with everything. I think Andrew's dealing now. with two phone calls, one in each ear in there. <laughs> right. So hopefully he'll um, bring back up what the park looks like um, when it's there, but he's, uh, he's actually doing stuff. But uh, I'll just say a little thing on this. So this park, um, they did some work on this back in the 1970s, and he's still doing some stuff out there. Andrew, you listen to Mark. He's telling you. But it was uh, 
the, uh, they had a letter, and it was the, a joint understanding of a park at International Boundary Monument Number 1 between the United States and Mexico by the Beautify El Paso Association, the El Paso Historical Society, the Donna Anna Historical Society, and the U- U.S. IBWC. Mm-hmm. And so there's a picture of this, of the park, and what it looked like back in the 1970s. And we just, uh, our public affairs officer actually had a little thing on there on this that I uh, wrote up a, a tweet for her. You know, it's a lot limited in the amount of space you can do. But it showed the picture of the park and uh, uh, what it looked like back in the 1970s, some benches and rocks and stuff around there. And the one thing is, if you look if, on the hill on this picture, when Andrew gets it up, is that's it. And if you look, there's actually power poles up there. Well, the power poles, you know, of course, are gone and everything. And monument number two is way up there also on the hill. On that side. ridge? Right, but it's off on the right. It's outside of the, the picture here. This is pointing towards the well, south. Well, you can drive down west. like uh, some parts of uh, uh, Shadow Mountain and look over there, you see it, and it shines. And you go, other other parts of the city, you can see it. Well, so if you're driving down Paisano and you look up there in the, in the, with the sunlight, you'll see monument number two up there on the hill. It's up. It's, that's the one that's up high. Right. Yeah. And it, it's funny because I'll take people down there, and I'll, uh, people who grew up in El Paso. And this is what's funny. It's the little-known history people don't know. That's what I'm talking about today is the little-known stuff. And I say, oh, uh, where's the, uh, what's that big monument on the hill? And they go, uh, Crystal Ray. Like, no, <laughs> that's the crossover. The little pyramid-looking thing. Yeah. Right. What's that? They, oh, I don't know. And it's like, that's the international border. Yeah. The that's three points of, two. yeah. Number two. Right. And it's like divided right down the center. Mexico on the south, U.S. on the north. Yeah. yeah. And people don't know that. So when you take them to monument number one, where this shows, you're actually, you can step right on the line and you have one foot in Mexico, one in the U.S. People love to, tourists used to love to go down oh. there. And I did it with people all the time. You go down and back and forth. Look, I'm in Mexico. I'm in the U.S. You can, still, you can still go down there. I thought they had blocked that for a while. The gate is open. Okay. So all you have to do is come off uh, Corshane Bridge, take a left, and just follow the levee down. Mm-hmm. The, the problem right now is if you want to go visit it, is El Paso Waters um, cleaning the river out from the sewage spill. And so sometimes the road to get down there along the levee is blocked. Stay off the, the road. That's a private road to the west. And just follow the levee down. You can see that. Then you come off there by the railroad bridges, and you get back on the levee. And you can just go on through and visit it. Sometimes the bridge, it's usually open uh, during the weekdays, but you can go down there. Interesting. But to, time to take another break here. Mark Howe is the cultural resources specialist. Am I getting closer? Yep. Okay, that's who you are. For the International <laughs> Boundary Water Commission. And uh, when we come back, now can we talk about the corridor of history that's going through there? You know, from from uh, Hart's Mill all the way up. Yeah, let's talk about, uh, um, we'll talk about the uh, let's take a break International first. Dam. Think about that. Let's take a break first and come with that. And what do you got, anybody on well, social media? I had a couple of questions going back to talking about Mills as well as uh, Carlos Ramirez. Carlos Ramirez was appointed by George W. Bush. And then also going with Anson Mills, because of his involvement with Custer, he actually retrieved the flag that fell at the the battle where Custer was killed and delivered it to his wife, Libby. So it's kind of ironic, all this different history, how people are all linked up all over. Right. It all comes comes through here. And I'm also, I've just posted the link to the IBWC website for the history. So if people want to go back and look some more. And as an undergrad student at University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I actually was, I did the artifact analysis from the Reno Benteen dump. Ah. And we actually found, one of the guys, or volunteers, found a body (laughs) From one of the troopers down by the river, so I actually got to work on all of that. That got oh, me into believe. forensic anthropology. And there's the guy, good morning from Hawaii. That's Mark Morales. Yeah. Hi, jealous, Mark. Mark. Hi, Mark on Facebook there. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Taking a break here on the El Paso History Radio Show. We shall return in just a moment. M1, EP Matt. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. 
And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to... Well, thank you in the control room there, Mr. Andrew J. Polk. He's uh, Talk El Paso host Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. right here on 690. And next week, he starts hosting this show, That's right. and his first guest will be Jim Tolbert and Eric Kappas, and they're uh, with the Celebration of Our Mountains. And, Andrew, you're going to talk about geology and mountains around El Paso next week. Yeah, something I always love talking about is the, you know, the natural history, the landscape, how we got the way it is, and just some of the facts that uh, blow some people's minds about being, like, oh, covered by 11 times over uh, geologic history by oceans in this region. Just, I mean, it's insane stuff once you really start delving into it. And then some of the extra features we got out there. I mean, Waco Tanks, Kilburn's Hole, White Sands. We have a plethora of history about it here. So how we've gotten to this modern history and the way you can and enjoy them now, very important. Good luck with that. And what you got, Melissa? Well, speaking of water, the Centennial Museum at UTEP has a new exhibit called Waterways. And it's going on now. And the exhibit highlights a very important topic for our region, which is, of course, water. 
uh, the waterways explores the past, present, and future of water in El Paso and how it divides us and unites us and the historic, artistic, economical, political, and social lenses. This exhibit, uh, Waterways, is part of the Museum of Main Street, a collaboration between the Smithsonian Institution and the Centennial Museum and the Chihuahua Desert Gardens that have adapted from a they were adapted from an exhibit, uh, exhibit uh, excuse me, organized by the American Museum of Natural History in New York. That's a great exhibit. Head on out there to see it. You can find it at, in the Centennial Museum at University and Wiggins Road in UTEP campus. And there's parking for visitors behind the museum and gardens. Get out there. See what you think. It's an interesting thing to do. All right, Mark Al, we're running out of time here to talk about all these many things. You got about four minutes in this before we hit another break. What do you got? Okay. Um, well, the... First on that, yes, go down there and see that because you're going to see a lot of exhibits and stuff about what we're talking about today on history. So what we're looking at right now is we're going to be talking about the diversion dams uh, that we actually have along the river, but the one here in town called International Dam that's uh, right down over by Hart's Mill. Okay. So you'll see that, and Andrew's actually going to be pulling those up in a minute. But uh, so International Dam is downstream of American Dam. And was originally built up with loaded sacks over 100 years ago. The dam was reconstructed in 1940 by the Bureau of Reclamation with rocks, concrete, and radio gates. And then it was re, uh, rebuilt. And it's to deliver water into the Sequia Madre for irrigation of farms in the Juarez Valley. And as um, Andrew's going to go to the next slide on there, that actually uh, shows that area of what Hart's Mill looked like. You can see uh, back in the 1800s, uh, it was rapids and stuff down that area. And he goes to the next one. And then you'll see another picture here of the Simeon Hearts Mill in that area. And you can see the rapids in here. And the Sequia Madre is off the left there. And then we'll go to the next one. And that picture is, Andrew, go ahead and go to the next one. And that is showing the uh, Mexican dam and head of Juarez is a Sequia Madre. Now, one thing is on these pictures, notice the background. There's nothing in the background. You go down there today, it's full of people from Juarez. This is just houses all the way up. Yeah. Right. And so you have this going through there, and you can see the Sequia Madre in the background. And then we'll go to the next one, and you can see a view of it. And you're looking over to the northwest. You can see the people out here, and you can see what the dam, the diversion dam, looked like for, for that water. And then the next one will actually, uh, hopefully, will show a picture of some of the. Oh, okay. He doesn't have that. But uh, I had some slides on here talking about Franklin Canal. So what it did was it came down and connected, American Canal connected to Franklin Canal for water to go to the American irrigators on that side. That's where American Dam was built for, was to divert the water into the 1906 water. It track. goes through downtown and ends up in Asleta. Right. It goes down, follows that area down along there, Franklin Canal. But American Canal is only a couple <laughs> miles long from American Dam down to that area, then cuts over that area. And... Um, Next slide uh, shows when they were doing some construction on here. And Andrew can go that. There you go. And you can see Franklin Canal and then how the construction of American Canal is coming through. But notice that area. You look at that and you can match this picture up to the background of what you're seeing over there in Mexico. And you can still see that slope of the hillside on the left side coming down. And then the, the hills way in the background, and then the mountains off towards the They're right. They're all covered with houses now. Though. Right. But that used to be an arroyo that came down to the river. <laughs> and so you have that. And hopefully he has another picture um, of the Hart's Mill. And so you know where the Hacienda restaurant is now? Yeah. Well, this picture that hopefully he um, – yeah, it's the next one. Go ahead and pop that one up. You can see that, and you see the Hacienda. But you notice on the left, there's a big building there. <laughs> And that's where the parking lot and everything is. So in the future, um, a Barra group is uh, now owns that area, the Hacienda and stuff. And they're actually going to be, they're doing a lot of work cleaning things up. And there is a THC marker on the inside of that for the Hacienda. Yeah. But oh, all yeah, of that is, is yeah. full of archaeology that's buried in that area. Well, also you had Fort Bliss, which was just north of there. Right. Oh, and, and that's always been an amazing that you still have the buildings are still there. And I'm, I'm wondering how they never got damaged by some of the flooding or did they possibly? Possibly. Yeah. But you, you, you weren't that far away um, from 73 to 93. Um, and what you see is when we were doing, El Paso Water was doing a project down there some years ago. And as you can see on some, well, he doesn't have the photos up. But there's some old photos here. Where it says, uh, it's an aer aerial photos that talks about that area, and you can see that. 
Uh, it's that picture that he's going to show next. And you can see that. And notice that. You can see Sunset Heights off to the right, top right. And you can see how the river came down. And then you have the two officers' buildings and that whole area was where Old Fort Bliss was. And you also have the Hacienda. You can see that down in the corner. And actually on the island between American Canal and the river, there was a, um, a gatekeeper's house. Right. And so he was there. But if you look up to the north, you can see just as you're coming down, you can see the College Arroyo that goes through UTEP. UTEP yeah. is just to the uh, north in this air photo, which is actually <laughs> east. But then you can see how now today, how it's completely expanded. So you look at this and you're just like amazed that, wow. People can take a look at this on Facebook right. if they wish to do so. And uh, they can see the pictures we're talking about. In the meantime, we're going to take another break. Mark, I'll come back and let's get into some. And then we'll talk about the dam that was supposed to go in. Oh, upriver. my. And it could have blown away everything upriver. Would have had a nice lake here. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, skiing, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. the uh, Paso Country Club. My house would have been underwater. Underwater. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. Taking a break on the El Paso Vista Radio Show. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. 
Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retirement. Time to tell you basically what's going on this week only in El Paso, Inc. On a sugar high, a national candy and snack manufacturer in El Paso is doubling its operations on the border. Also in the Inc., the Capos Building, it's historic, dilapidated, and its future is unclear after it failed to sell at an online auction. And what's in El Paso's tap water? Should it be filtered or other questions answered? Depends if you're downriver from that dam or not. Anyway, El Paso's business journal, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery. To receive El Paso Inc., order it online at elpasoinc.com. All right, we got Mark Cow here, and you're going to head up a river here from La Hacienda and talk about the history, right? Right. What's up? Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to say is, you know the big X in Mexico right yeah. there? Uh, what people don't understand is El Paso history is the big X is the center, El Paso. All these trails, Camino Real, uh, the soon-to-be Pike Trail, the Butterfield Trail, the Overland Trails, all these trails came through this area and spread out because of water. That was the resource. You needed to have water. Oh, yeah. And so that's why, you know, when you say El Paso history starts, Texas history starts here in El Paso, it's because of that nexus point right here. Well, and, and a lot of a lot of it had to do with just the, the geography and then the what happened over time. And when you go back into other parts of Texas, the European history I'm really referring to, uh, that, that European history of, of anywhere in the, in the New World, when it got to Texas, it started here before it hit the rest of the places. Right. And what we're going to talk about now is Andrew is going to uh, put up in a minute. The um, This is from the proceedings, the one a book I was talking about earlier that shows a big folio book. You can find it at the National Archives online. And they were going to put a dam down over here just north of the railroad bridges in the early 1900s. And so what uh, he's showing there this is uh, from that. This is about 1896. And what they're talking about is what they're going to do. Right about where executive comes into uh, right. the, the river area. And then some of the pictures, I was kind of hoping the smelter town. But if you go down there, you're going to notice on the west side, you get just north of railroad bridges, you have the outcrops that are in that area. And Eric might talk about some of this when he's on next week. But then you look to the east, and it's all open. It didn't used to be. It did not used to be. And you look at the pictures of the Mexican Revolution down there, and what do you see in the background? You actually see the cement plant smokestack because that's all limestone. And what do you use limestone for? It all got taken down to turn into building uh, foundations. Making concrete. 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 Right. So what they were going to do back in this one is talking about um, was uh, May uh, 6, 1896. They were going to do put a, a dam and reservoir near El Paso with the following enclosures. And they were talking to Mr. Ripley, who was the railroad for the um, Etchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad Company uh, of what we're going to do. And uh, Mr. McGoffin of McGoffin Home Fame was naming a price upon 7,000 acres of land to be submerged that he owned. Up the up the river, up the valley. Right. About and, where El Paso Country Club is. Yeah, I think so. Oh, and my. So and roughly in that area. In 1889, they started investigations on this. Of course, that's when the commission was formed. Um. And so Mr. Follett, remember him? I told you he was a consulting engineer for the commission at that time. Right. And so he was doing that. And he was saying um, they're going to make, he made an estimate that the old wooden bridge also worn out, which the road was contemplating moving and has since replaced by an iron and stone structure at large cost. That was the railroad bridges that he was talking about. And the land itself, uh, they were going to get about 27,000 acres. Is not worth over three or four dollars per acre at that time when they were doing this, and the depth ranges of what they were, this is what they were estimating that if they put a dam in that area it was going to be forty-four to eighty-seven feet across the gorge at that time frame. It was a gorge, 
500 feet wide, filled with sand and gravel. And they were going to do that. You're talking about a dam right there where executive hits yes. Donovan. Now, wow. Andrew, go to the very last photo, if you would. And that one. Okay. So if you look at that photo, that one, and thank you, Bernie Sargent, for uh, showing me that. And I found that when he gave it to me. I see his fingerprint right on it. Yeah. <laughs> if you look on the left side, notice the buildings and everything over there? How high are they? Not. 30, 30 to 50 feet high. And if you go oh, down there to Above the river. Right. And that area, you can actually drive. That's just south. Uh, if you know where the old McNuck refinery was at, across from mm -hmm. the dinosaur track sites that Eric is going to yeah. be talking right. about, yeah. that whole area is open. You know, you have Paisano, and then you have the border highway, and then you have I-10 going up there in that area. Well, if you look at this photo, that area, as you're going uh, south on this, you can see that that was all full. Uh, it was earth and limestone and everything else. But it was about 40 to 50 feet higher than it is now. And so that's why you see those buildings up there of uh, where the rubber was right next to the river. And so that's why they were going to put the dam in that area, and then it was going to flood north. And on here, they were going to use it as a mason. They were going to put a masonry uh, dam because of the limestone. And then um, where the bedrock lies, the depths which are not prohibitory. That's where they were going to put this. And this is all from this. Um, it's not exceeding 87 feet uh, at that point. And if you go to the next map, Andrew, this map shows uh, what it was looking like at that time frame. And if you look at that map, you can see... Um, on this, sorry for everybody on the radio, but you can see the topography on the geological map on this, and you can see how right in that area, they have a yellow line going across, and that's where they were going to put it at, and that's where you have that area where the river cut through over time. It used to be, you know, yeah. limestone, and it's it's tilted. That you saw, you go down there too, you can see it's tilted by the railroad bridges, but that was the area they were going to put it in, and you can see that the whole area going up river, um, was high elevation of, of, of the earth. And now you look at the east side and it's gone. So it's all flat. And so people said, oh, why are they going to put a dam here? It's like, well, 100 years ago, there it looked be, different. Yeah. It looked a lot different. So that's the whole point. And there so, would have been a dam there. It might have made sense. It might have worked. Right. Uh, but it, and now, of course, you never. So they were going to do, um, when they were talking about this, because we were the State Department at that time, to get a, um, a cost of about looking at 100 acres of land from the U.S. to Mexico. There were 100 lands in Mexico were going to be affected, they were saying, at that time frame. And this is all uh, 1890s. And, of course, Anson Mills was the commissioner. So there's all these tie-ins to everything you're seeing of how the history of, this, of El Paso. And um, here's, a, here's another thing that I was looking at. Um, and this is from the conclusion from the article they're saying is the fact of a decrease in the flow of the river at El Paso exists as claimed and dates back to 1888 or 1889. Before those years, the river went dry at intervals of about 10 years. Since 1888, it has been dry every year but two. Wow. And this is from the 1901-1903. We're, we're, we're kind of in that again, are we not? Right. But also you have to think about um, if Elephant Butte wasn't there. You would be having a lot of different um, scenarios. You, you probably have what water you had would just flooding to right. drought, you know drought like we're going through but now. But recently, I was just up by Hatch a few weeks ago, and there's water in the river, but it's groundwater. So when you're pumping water out, you're going to lower the groundwater. Yeah. Under the 1906 treaty, it says surface flow water. Are you about wrapped up here? Yes, I'm about wrapped up. I wanted to talk uh, the Smelter Town stuff, but we need to get you guys on. Well, get but tell, give us take two minutes. Wrap it up. <laughs> um, well, we're just going to talk. If you go down there uh, in this area, uh, Smelter Town, um, there's two buildings left. They're, everything's buried. Okay, remember in the 70s, they, all they did was just knock everything over and buried it under three feet of dirt. And Andrew's uh, showing some stuff you're going to have in a minute. Um, and there used to be a YMCA down there. Um, a lot of people live down there. You see in this picture, that's just showing this is the Smelter Arroyo. And in the far... There's a close up here in this next photo. You can see the bridge that goes across. And if you notice that, it's actually higher up. That bridge is going to be, uh, it's starting to, the wood is wearing away. And so we're going to replace that in uh -huh. the future.
But that is one of the, the structures is still left. And there's a picture, a close up of it. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. I yep, that right. one. And then you can see the picture in the next one that actually shows what it looks like today. So it's going to be replaced. But north of the railroad bridges, if Andrew can get that picture, uh, you're going to see another building. And this is the what's left of the Asarco uh, pump house. And so that is an archaeological site. And then I just took the next image that he'll show is Google Earth. And you can see it. So when you drive down Paisano, there's this building, you have no idea what it's for, yeah. but that's the pump house that actually sent water up to Asarco. Wow. And they just took the water, basically. Right. And so they have uh, structures back there that go to the river that pump the water out. The building itself is empty. There's a concrete pad in there. But that's uh, something you don't even notice as you drive by. If someone wanted to look up uh, some yeah, of this information, it. where would they find it online? Um, a lot of information you can find at the National <laughs> Archives, Library of Congress. Um, also, you know, people will send us information for stuff to do a FOIA request, or they actually will send emails, and then we just bump it up, bump it up the chain of command <laughs> to get permissions to help them out and stuff. Fair enough. Um, a lot of stuff I've learned in the past, I learned from other researchers who told me about stuff that they were looking at <laughs> at the at the commission themselves in the past. In fact, Leon, his book, The Border, he came into the commission, and a lot of stuff that he wrote in his book was based on came stuff he got from the, yeah, from the IBWC. That's amazing. And so his book is at the National Archives. I've seen that down there in their map room. They actually have it down there. Another one on um, uh, on the borderlands. So a lot of stuff. So he's uh, well recognized in the stuff on the border for what he wrote about. All so right. I appreciate being on the show. And then um, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. I hope you learned some new stuff that always I I offered. Very here. interesting. Yeah, a lot of comments from Facebook says. People learned a lot, so that's really good. That's what it's all about. And hopefully, you're learning in, as you're listening. So. Right, and you always learn. That's the whole point. Because I'm I'm working on a PhD in geography, in New Mexico State. Oh so boy, hopefully I'll be talking about a lot of stuff on the borderlands in mm -hmm. the future on for my dissertation. Well, Mark, Al, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. We'll stick around till the end of the show if you like, and yes. or, or you want to hurry up and get out to Pepe's. No, I'll wait. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, people can come out and talk to Mark at uh, Pepe's also. It's going to be a crowded place, I think. It's going to be fun. Did, did somebody warn Peppy we're I coming? I just texted Bernie. Oh, goodness. Okay, good. Should be an interesting adventure no it's, matter what. It's always packed when we're out there. Yeah, and, I know, because it's, it's a great restaurant to go to. Everybody, all the families love to go in. You know, they always bring me two bottles of salsa. I know. <laughs> 67, 61, <laughs> Donovan Drive. All right. Taking a break here on the El Paso History Radio Show. M1, EP, you are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso.
Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows. On- All right, we always tell you to look at the McGoffin Home for a place to go to take out-of-town people or just to go if you need to. McGoffin Home is on McGoffin Avenue near downtown. You got a quick announcement? Yeah, the Museum of History has an exhibit this week. It's Manhattan Heights, Thursday, March 17th at 6.30 to 8.30 uh, to 8 p.m. And they're going to have an opening for the, this is the Neighborhoods and Shared Memories uh, section of the museum. Manhattan Heights, newest exhibit. All right, this is our last show. This is our last segment. Melissa, what are your thoughts? I'm going to miss everybody. I especially like the listeners. I mean, they've always been so good. They've educated me, and hopefully I've educated them in certain ways. And it's just been a fun ride and wild and crazy ride kind of in its own way. We've been through a lot in this 10, 11 years we've been involved. Plus, the few years that we were on on and off with Leon, we'd come on and visit. It was always just a treat to be here. And it was good working with Leon. I will tell you that. Yeah. He was a storyteller to be to be had in El Paso. Nothing better, really. And that's our foundation, yeah. Well, he's the, the, the shoulders we stand on giants. He's one of them. Yeah. And uh, it's been an interesting time. And, Andrew, we're hoping that uh, when you get on here next week, uh, you can take us into new heights as well. That's definitely the plan. I mean, I've grown up with El Paso history, been involved in the various productions that we've done over the years and been increasingly involved with the radio production here. And that legacy is not lost on me of, you know, coming from Leon Metz, Leon Metz program now to the El Paso History Radio Show and continuing on with the El Paso History Radio Show because, I mean, this is unique for us here to do this, to talk about this. And I think that it's something that helps our region overall. So we're definitely going to keep doing it. And that lady walking in the background in the picture, that's Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> you had to come down and take some pictures, huh? Yeah. Oh, why not? And yeah. oh, you assume the media. It's been, a, it's been a fun thing to do here, Melissa. Thank you for very, very much for everything you've contributed. And, and I also want to point out, Bernie and I will be leaving El Paso. We're heading east towards central Texas. We've got a lot of things we're going to be doing there uh, involved with history again, but we're going to expand it on all of El Paso. I mean, all of Texas's history and the podcast, Texas History A to Z. Watch for announcements on that. That'll be great because you'll, you'll be able to cover the entire state. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. And so the whole idea of El Paso history to me has always been interesting. I didn't really understand it. I went away for 27 years to D.C. Uh, after I was about 18 years old, I took off, went to college, came back and said, well, I wonder whatever happened here. And Charlie Russell called me and said, would you come down and sit with Leon, make sure he goes to commercial? <clears throat> I had a radio background already. Charlie knew that. I've been in broadcasting for most of my career. And it was an interesting time to come down and sit with Leon. And I learned so much sitting in this exact chair here. And he was, uh, he was a, a master of what he did. 
Yeah. And so I really thank him uh, in his posthumous way yes. for being who he was and what he did. Because he sort of led the way on, on looking at El Paso history for and most he, people. He did the old-fashioned way. He had to go through libraries and archives and books and records. Now we've got the Internet, and it makes it so much easier. And it, it does change history in many ways of, of written history. Because now that you're able to see so many more sources, old newspapers around the country, the way stores, stories were reported, it can change history. And it's been a fun ride here with you. I appreciate that. Appreciate too. And I think in the future, Andrew's going to do well. I think that's the thing to think about mostly, is that El Paso history is the star of the program here. We've been kind of like facilitating it. We've been, become known for that. But it's a matter of what, what is really important here, and I think it's the history of El Paso. And if we do nothing else, we should teach our children the history and heritage from the area so they'll know where they came from and what's to be expected. And that's how parents learn, is they learn from us or other sources, and then they teach it to their children. That's the best way kids have a good time on that. All right, any, uh, any last thoughts from you, Andrew? I'm excited to take this on to keep it going and to keep teaching about the history of El Paso because, yeah, the amount of times I've had – way too long conversation with people as we go deep dive into some subject that they had never even been introduced to be either local or out of town here. I love doing that personally. So the ability to do that here on the radio every Saturday, 10 to noon, something we'll definitely keep doing. And you'll be also still, you're still sticking around for weekdays, Monday oh, through yeah. Friday. We we'll do that, but we, we do different things there. Don't worry. And you'll have a, a format like ours kind of, we'll see who knows. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll have on guests. We'll be talking about the amazing aspects of El Paso history that just need to be talked more about. Fair enough. Mark, you have any last thoughts you want to throw in here? Oh, it's it's <laughs> been an uh, an honor to be on your show many times. Uh, Going to miss uh, you and uh, Bernie when you guys leave. Um, I'll stop Jackson, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just here. Don't get me crying now. Oh, yeah. I'm just here. But uh, you're right. You know, as, we're, as I was saying before, you know, the big X over there in Mexico, everything centers here. Yeah. And with all the different trails and stuff and everything, the history – People don't realize that. And so it's important for us to keep teaching that and learning. Thank you for being our guest today, Melissa. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's been fun. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista. (laughs) We'll see everybody in the future. I'll be back occasionally doing history moments. We'll see you in the future on the El Paso History Radio Show. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening.